Welcome into the Ports Player Spotlight. I'm Curtis Bryant, joined by Ports Closer Paul Smythe. Paul, a, a terrific start to the year, your first in high A. What's been working for you so far? Uh, you know, I think the big thing at this level, the people will tell you that this is a hitter's league. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of pop moving into this league, and the way the wind blows out here, I think the key has been keeping the ball low, throwing a lot of strikes. Now, you basically skipped over Kane County as a brief stint there at the end of last year. How would you compare the competition here to the Northwest League in the Big 12? Uh, you know, I think that you know the Big 12 is something different in itself than college baseball. You know, aluminum bats and the way that college baseball is played is you know completely different compared to professional baseball. But uh, with, compared to the, the Midwest League and the Northwest League, I would say that uh, here just everyone's more polished. You know, pitchers have uh, the ability to pitch as well as stuff, and the hitters are a lot more disciplined in the zone. Now, Daniel Sattler was the original closer. He got called up to Midland on April 26th. At that point, did the coaches say, you're the new closer, or you're going to be the first guy in a committee to get a shot? Uh, no, it wasn't really anything like that. Uh, about a week after he had gone, I think I had had one of the opportunities to close, and uh, Coach Schultz came up to me and told me that uh, I was going to have the opportunity to close a few more games, and uh, since then it's been working, so we've been sticking with it. Now, as a player that knows they're not going to get into the game until late, if at all, how do you utilize that time, those early innings in the bullpen? Uh, I think something that you got to do is you got to pay attention to what the hitters' tendencies are. You know, we have our meetings, uh, getting out the scouting reports, something like that. But you know, nothing, nothing goes as far as being able to watch them actually play in the game and see kind of what their swings are looking like, what kind of pitches they're swinging at. Now that people talk about the closers' mentality, what's going through your mind as you're in the bullpen warm but up knowing you're about to be in that situation with the game on the line? Uh, you know, it's you know, it's usually late in the game. Guys are tired. Uh, Emotions are kind of running high at that point, and uh, I think it's one of those things that you got to come in, stay calm. And the biggest thing is getting that first guy out. So as long as you put all your focus towards one pitch at a time, then it works out well. Now you have a bit of an unorthodox delivery, kind of a low arm angle. Have the coaches try to tweak your mechanics at all? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. Uh, you know, I've uh, had that arm angle actually since I was just a young kid, uh, playing catch and everything like that. It's just always kind of come out from a low three-quarter arm slot. Uh, I think they're happy with the movement I get on my baseball, so they're happy with it. Now, is the name uh, Brad Ziegler uh, familiar? I bet you with the A's who kind of has that similar low arm angle and has had a lot of success. Sure, Ziegler's uh, quite a bit lower than I am. Um, but, you know, both being ground ball pitchers, we have similarities in what we're trying to accomplish when we're facing hitters and running balls in and keeping the ball down to guys, uh, you know, forcing them to drive the ball into the ground. I saw you talking earlier today with pitching coach Don Schulze. How good of a resource have you found him, a guy who's pitched in the major leagues? You know, a lot of the guys uh, that are the you know, involved with the pitching with the A's have been great. You know, last year I had Lefty and uh, then Jim and in Kane for a brief stint. Now having Schulze, just to have these guys with a wealth of knowledge and uh, mostly just, you know, experience going through the things that you're going through as a minor leaguer. Uh, you know, it really helps just to have some, some feedback from someone who's sharing a similar background. Now, last year you had a truly unbelievable season. Didn't give up a run in 36 and a third innings in the Northwest League and had a brief stint with Kane County. Did you surpass even your own expectations? You know, I did my best. You know, it's, it's tough. It was a long, it was a long season to go through and not say that I wasn't thinking about it. But I did my best to kind of keep it in the back of my mind and, you know, not not really have any kind of expectations of myself other than just kind of continue going out and doing what I was trying to do every day. Now, after that great season, you were named uh, the relief pitcher or the short season reliever of the year by minor league baseball. What did that award mean to you? It was great, you know, to get a rec to get recognition from uh, from MILB.com and uh, just you know recognition in general after being a 35th rounder. I don't think many people were looking for too much guy uh, from the guys in the later rounds, and uh, myself and you know a couple other guys, including Connor Crumbless, who's I think like our 25th or 28th rounder. You know, to get production from the lower rounds, you know, I, I know the organization's happy with that. Yeah, I make up a little bit for not even being named to the All Star team. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even find out. I didn't realize that there was an All Star team because I just figured short season meeting an All Star break. How could there be an All Star team? So, uh, I, I, you know, that doesn't bother me. I, I didn't really care about that. Now, you come from a small town on, on the coast of Central California. You went to college at the University of Kansas. How big of a culture shift was that? Uh, the people were great. <laughs> you know, out in Kansas, it's a it's a slower lifestyle and everything like that. And you know compared to kind of what I was used to, even though I'm from a smaller town. But, uh, you know, culturally, you know, it's, it's it's a diverse area in Lawrence. You know, a lot of people come from out of town to go to KU, and it's got a rich tradition of, uh, you know, excellence in school and in athletics. So it was just a great experience to go out there. Is, is the uh, the baseball season, the pitching, is the weather a lot of different? Anything to get used to there? Absolutely. The weather was probably the biggest, uh, the biggest adjustment I had to make in, in general from, you know, just uh, lifestyle standpoint and then also just from baseball. You know, it's uh, it gets freezing. You're trying to start the season when we were there. They hadn't uh, changed the rule as to what the start date was going to be for the NCAA yet. So we're starting our seasons February 1st. So, uh, so 
I'm getting get used to it.